Greetings and welcome back to our series, Sacred Readings and Wisdom Stories, a series in which we contemplate scripture, uh, wisdom tales, poetry from across different spiritual traditions and cultures as a way of inspiring our imagination, our creativity, uh, enriching our own spiritual journeys, uh, especially in times such as these that we're living in. Uh, the gift of story, poetry, the creative word, I think, is a is a very timely and special gift right now. And so I offer this video series as an opportunity to explore that further. Uh, as we do each time we gather, we're, we will start with a bit of centering time right now, and then I'll share with you our story for this session. So as we come together, bring your attention to your body, your awareness, to your breath. We come here to this moment at different points in our lives, different time frames, as you connect to this recording. But most likely you come to this moment out of the fullness, the busyness of a day. And it takes a moment to shift awareness, to be present. So let's do that by taking several deep, intentional breaths and simply let your attention, the gaze of your mind, your heart rest on the in-breath and the out-breath as you receive them and offer them. As you continue with awareness on the breath, letting your breath find a natural rhythm and ease, I offer a simple breath prayer to you that we'll spend just a moment with. As you take in breaths silently, Offer the words, I breathe in peace. I breathe in peace. Then as you release the exhalation quietly in silence in your heart, offer the words, I breathe out a smile. I breathe out a smile. And you can just allow your, your face to Gently move into a smile as you offer those words. I breathe in peace. I breathe out a smile. May God's peace be with us in this shared time as we reflect on this story. The story I bring today finds its source uh, in India originally. Um, it's entitled, or the title I offer this story uh, and give for it is The Sannyasi's Treasure. A sannyasi is in uh, the Indian culture a term given to people who often at near the end of life in old age, uh, make a choice to renounce much of their worldly possessions and titles and um, live a life of a, of a renunciate or a, a wandering um, 
ascetic. Uh, they devote their life to prayer, um, to the practice of presence with God. The sannyasis often wear saffron robes. That's often how they're identified. They aren't always old, uh, but typically it comes for people that stage comes at the end of you know, a life where they've already been a, a student, a householder, and then they reach a point where they want to deepen their inner life later in life. So you'll hear that term here referring to an older wise woman in the story, the sannyasi's treasure. And as always, I'll read the story twice. You'll hear it once, simply allow the story to unfold and see what catches your attention. And then I'll pause for a bit of silence and then read it a second time. And perhaps with that second reading may offer just some um, guiding questions or reflections. The Sannyasi's Treasure. There once was a man who had a dream, the sort of dream that felt real, wakeful, important. In this dream, he found himself walking down to the bank of a wide river and meeting an old, wise woman, a sannyasi, underneath a great tree. The woman had a precious stone in her bag that she gave to the man. This dream felt so real that he could barely sleep the rest of the night. When morning came, the man got up. He made his way to the nearby river. And there, sure enough, he saw an old woman sitting under a great tree. She was wearing the saffron robes of a sannyasi, a wandering renunciate, a wise one. He approached her excitedly and said, Last night I dreamt that I would meet you here and that you would give me a very precious stone. Please, can you give me the stone of great value? The woman smiled at him with kindness and compassion. She opened her bag and pulled out the largest diamond the man had ever seen. You must mean this, she said. I found it the other day in my wanderings. I have no use for it. You're welcome to have it. The man took the stone, rushed home, excited at how rich he had suddenly become. And yet, as the day went on, that initial excitement soon wore off. The man found himself feeling troubled about something and deeply unsatisfied. Finally, as the day neared its end and the sun was about to set, he knew what he had to do. He rushed back to the river. He was grateful to find that the sannyasi was still there under her tree. He approached her and she offered the same kind and caring smile as before and he felt as if she could see into his heart. Here, he said, as he handed her the diamond, thank you for your generous gift, but I want to return this. And I would like to ask if you could please share with me the treasure that allowed you to give this diamond away so freely. There once was a man who had a dream, the sort of dream that felt real, wakeful, important. In this dream, he found himself walking down to the bank of a wide river and meeting an old wise woman, a sannyasi, underneath a great tree. The woman had a precious stone in her bag that she gave to the man. This dream felt so real that he could barely sleep the rest of the night. When morning came, the man got up and made his way to the nearby river. And there, sure enough, he saw an old woman sitting under a great tree. She was wearing the saffron robes of a sannyasi, a wandering renunciate, a wise one. He approached her excitedly and said, Last night I dreamt that I would meet you here and that you would give me a very precious stone. Please, can you give me the stone of great value? 
The woman smiled at him with kindness and compassion. She opened her bag and pulled out the largest diamond the man had ever seen. You must mean this, she said. I found it the other day in my wanderings. I have no use for it. You're welcome to have it. The man took the stone. He rushed home, excited at how rich he had suddenly become. And yet, as the day went on, that initial excitement soon wore off. The man found himself feeling troubled about something, deeply unsatisfied. Finally, as the day neared its end and the sun was about to set, he knew what he had to do. He rushed back to the river. He was grateful to find that the sannyasi was still there under her tree. He approached her, and she offered him the same kind and caring smile as before, and he felt as if she could see into his heart. Here, he said as he handed her the diamond, thank you for your generous gift, but I want to return this. And I would like to ask if you could please share with me the treasure that allowed you to give this diamond away so freely. Let's sit in silence for a bit longer now and just notice what comes to you as you hold this story in your heart, your mind's eye. Uh, what gift of wisdom might be there in this story for you today? So what came to you? What wisdom was received? If you wish to share in the comments on this video, please do. Uh, I think it might be wonderful to hear some of the reflections that emerge out of these stories uh, for each of us. I know for me, as I hear this story today, I think of those words in the Sermon on the Mount from Jesus when he says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And there seems to be something of that message uh, in this wonderful story. I noticed too in the story how uh, the woman, the sannyasi, does not lecture the younger man on what he should or should not do. Uh, she doesn't caution him about the sudden wealth of this diamond. Though perhaps she might understand all that, she seems to know what we all come to know, that there are things we have to learn on our own, insights we have to come to on our own in this life. Nobody can force us into deeper awareness. Uh, we have to come to it when we're ready for it. I'm grateful for this story. I, I appreciate the wisdom that's here and that there is treasure in this life that surpasses uh, material things and wealth. So blessings to you as you hold this story and carry it with you. I want to close our time together today with this uh, psalm reading. It's actually an adaptation of Psalm 146, uh, and it's from this collection of adapted psalms written by Stephen Mitchell. I praise the Lord with my whole heart, and with each breath I sing to my God. Happy are those who trust him and surrender their lives to God's care. God creates us in God's own image, fills us with compassion, opening the eyes of the blind, lifting up those who have fallen. God's justice shines from the depths, hidden but always present. 
Praise God for what you can fathom. And for what you cannot fathom, praise God. May peace be with you until we meet here again.